The History of Bennett Spring State Park When discussing the history of Bennett Spring State Park, one must start well before the park came into existence. We will begin with the early inhabitants, which include prehistoric people through Native Americans. People have been coming to the area now known as Bennett Spring State Park for thousands of years, drawn by crystal clear water, plentiful game and fish, and abundant natural resources. This timeline of early inhabitants can be found at the Nature Center. No permanent man-made structures existed prior to the 1800s. We know about early inhabitants from items left behind, such as Dalton points, arrowheads, clay pipes, and stone and bone tools. These items are found throughout the area along creeks and springs and in caves in which the people sometimes used for shelter. Native Americans considered the area sacred and treated it with respect. According to legend, the people of the Middle Waters, as the Native Americans in the area called themselves, called the spring the Eye of the Sacred One. Originally, the spring was only a small round pool producing a small stream. Over time, the people of the Middle Waters forgot who they were and where they came from. One night, after they had returned from a raid, the Sacred One's wrath was felt by all as the ground shook, trees tumbled, and the earth as they had known it was forever changed. The little stream they had known ceased to flow, and the quiet pool became a large spring as ceaseless tears began to flow from the eye of the Sacred One. The Osage signed treaties with the U.S. government in 1808 and 1830. The Osage Treaty of 1808 was signed at Fort Clark on November the 10th. The Osage relinquished 50 million acres of land they held in what is now Missouri and Arkansas. In return, the United States paid a small sum of money and agreed to provide protection and supplies to the Osage who relocated to the fort. By the mid-1830s, almost all of the Native Americans were gone from the area. As the Native Americans were being relocated to other areas, settlers began to come to the valley. One of the first individuals was James Bryce. James Bryce scouted out the area in the 1830s and decided to settle here. He brought his wife, Anne, and two daughters, Jane and Anna, from Illinois around 1837. The U.S. government encouraged homesteading of the area with the Land Act of 1820. This act lowered the price from $2 to $1.25 an acre, reduced the minimum acreage to be purchased from 160 acres to 80 acre plots, and required full payment at time of purchase. James Bryce took advantage of this opportunity and bought the land around the spring. Settlers continued to arrive in the area. Some of the earliest family names included Bryce, Bennett, Hawk, Brown, Kahn, Henson, Lomax, Mullikane, and Clanton. With the arrival of more families came the development of a blacksmith shop, general store, and inn. Because of James Bryce's prominence and contribution to the area, the town was called Bryce. This town was located where the present-day park office and dining lodge are situated. The spring's daily flow of over 100 million gallons provided the perfect location for a grist mill. Bryce built the first mill between the present day dam and the spring. The mill utilized an undershot wheel where the water flowed under the wheel and pushed it. Two other early settlers, Peter Bennett Sr. and his son, Peter Bennett Jr., built a second mill near the confluence of the Spring Branch and the Niangle River. This and all future mills utilized an overshot wheel. With an overshot wheel, the water travels down a flume over the top of the wheel. The falling water travels faster and has more power. Both the Bryce Mill and the Bennett Mill were destroyed by floods in 1852. James Bryce and his son-in-law, John Clanton, were rebuilding their mill when Bryce died. Upon John Clanton's death in 1857, the 427-acre Bryce land and Clanton Mill became the property of Anna Clanton. When she married Peter Bennett Jr. sometime prior to 1860, the land and mill became his. 
Peter Bennett Jr. soon expanded the Clanton Mill and added a sawmill and carding machine. It is presumed that this mill was destroyed by either flood or fire. Bennett built a new three-story mill near the town of Bryce during the Civil War years. This mill was destroyed by fire in 1895. A final mill was built in 1900 by J.H. Hensley, Arminta Ashley, and Freeman Ashley. The Ashley Mill was located near the site of the last Bennett Mill and utilized the overshot wheel from that mill along with the intact dam floor and water and roadway usage rights. Many changes occurred at the mill, including the addition of double rollers and eventually a turbine to replace the overshot wheel. The mill also generated electricity for the hatchery. The Ashley Mill was used until 1944 when it was destroyed by fire. The town of Bryce reached its peak around 1918 with a population of 28. People came from miles around to have their grain ground at the mills and to enjoy the features Bryce had to offer. Farmers often had to wait for days for their grain to be ground. While waiting, they fished, camped, swam, and generally vacationed. Tourists from Lebanon also came to stay at Bryce Inn, fish in the crystal clear waters, and picnic. During this time, the United States Commission of Fish and Fisheries and the Missouri Fish Commission were working to stock waters in Missouri with the inexpensive and nutritious fish for people to eat. Fish were an important food source and were the first renewable resource to receive public attention. Various species of trout were stocked in the spring branch intermittently during the early 20th century. In 1923, a dentist from Oklahoma, Dr. Charles A. Furrow, leased land and water rights from William and Louis Bennett to construct a hatchery. The hatchery was to be used to raise trout for stocking in the spring branch. Dr. Furrow acquired 50,000 rainbow trout eggs from the Federal Fish Hatchery in Neosho, Missouri and put them in the new hatchery troughs. The first trout hatchery at Bennett was operational. Meanwhile, concern over the depletion of natural resources, both in Missouri and throughout the United States, led to the search for ways to preserve the remaining resources. Bison, bear, mountain lion, deer, and turkey once so plentiful, were rarely found, if at all. Lands were sought to start a state park system. Bryce and the surrounding area was being considered by state planners as a possible state park. On December 27, 1924, the state purchased eight and a half acres from Josephine Bennett Smith, and in 1925 purchased 565 acres from William Sherman Bennett. This 565 acres included the 427 originally owned by William's grandfather, James Bryce. What was not included in the sale was a one acre parcel of land upon which sits the Bennett Spring Church of God. The church was formed in 1917 when William and Louis Bennett donated an acre of land. A white clapboard building was built to hold church services. Prior to 1917, services were held either in the hardware store or in tents. Church services are still held at the church. The church is the only building remaining from the town of Bryce. Arlie Bramwell, great-great-grandson of James Bryce, was hired as the first superintendent of both the park and the hatchery. The game commission considered stocking four deer, turkey, and other wild animals, but said the park was not an adequate size reserve. Fishing was the exception. State stocking of trout began in May 1925 with 10,000 trout to be released that year. The tradition of opening day evolved after the creation of Bennett Springs State Park. The first official opening of a trout season occurred March 1, 1926. It is not known how many people attended that year. Two years later, 100 anglers rang in the season. By 1929, the Bennett Hotel booked its 50 rooms to capacity and turned down 25 additional requests. The fanfare of opening day that it still exists in some form started in 1932. This is when a church bell and pistol shots signaled the 6 a.m. start to the fishing year. 1,200 fishermen caught 3,000 trout. As the young state park was beginning to flourish, trout fishing was becoming established. The country entered the Great Depression. 
To help alleviate the struggles of young men and their families, the Civilian Conservation Corps was established in 1933. The purpose of the Civilian Conservation Corps was to provide work for single men ages 18 to 25, later this changed from 17 to 28, and programs to improve America's public lands, forests, and parks. Bennett Springs State Park was the recipient of one of the work crews. Company 1772 arrived in 1933 and remained until 1937. This company was special in that it was one of a handful of veteran companies. Veteran companies consisted of men who had served in World War I. Many men were married and had families. Initial work involved tearing down buildings from Bryce. One of the first construction projects entailed building barracks for themselves. Most of the work performed by the CCC was manual labor. Stone for the buildings and structures had to be quarried by hand and transported in trucks to the construction sites. Here are a pile of stones that were quarried locally and the framing of the dining lodge. And here is the completed dining lodge, the front view. Other structures built by the CCC include the Gage House, Bridge, Store, which is no longer in existence, a dam, cabins, shelter house, roads, and trails. Visitors to Bennett Springs State Park can take a walking tour of existing structures. Three cabins built by the CCC are still in use today, although they have been remodeled. The cabins are numbers 53, 58, and 59. December 1937 brought about a change at the Bennett Springs CCC camp. Veteran Company 1772, which had been located in the park since 1933, was redesignated as a unit and moved to Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Company 3744 replaced them. Bennett Springs State Park from 1937 to present day. Bennett Springs State Park continued to grow and develop. Camping and fishing remained popular activities. Up to this point, the State Game and Fish Department ran the state parks. In 1937, a cooperative agreement gave management of recreational areas to the State Park Board, now the Department of Natural Resources, and management of hatcheries to the Missouri Conservation Commission which governs the Missouri Department of Conservation. This division of management still exists. Originally, camping occurred along the banks of the Spring Branch. Visitors parked their vehicles and set up their tents where they could find space. In 1938, camping was 25 cents for a 24-hour period. By 1970, developed campgrounds were available to campers for fees ranging from $1.50 to $2 per day. Today, there are five campgrounds with varying combinations of electric, sewer, and water hookups. This is a view of the banks of the Spring Branch today. The Nature Center opened in 1969. It houses a cultural museum and the office of the park naturalist. The building is the Center for Interpretive and Education Programs. Renovations have occurred periodically through the years. An aquarium was installed and later removed. The dioramas were added in the late 1980s. Temporary displays are constantly being added in order to keep the museum experience fresh and to provide new educational opportunities. Much like George Kassler, the first naturalist at Bennett Springs State Park, park staff conduct programs for individuals, families, and groups. While the style of camping has changed, the making of memories and spending time relaxing and enjoying each other's company has remained the same. The state continued to purchase land as it became available. Several properties were acquired from the 1970s to the 1990s. The purposes for the acquisitions were to protect the park from encroachment of commercial businesses, control pollution into the spring branch, and eliminate inholdings, which are land completely surrounded by state park property. The additions have increased the size of the park to 3,338 acres. 
The trail system has developed over time as parkland was acquired. The original trails were footpaths that town residents and CCC men used. The most recent trail addition is the 7.5 mile natural tunnel trail leading to the natural tunnel. The area has a rich and varied history. The name changes that have occurred reflect that history and what the area was best known for at the time. As it has for thousands of years, the area will continue to be important in the lives of people for many years to come. Bennett Springs State Park is here to ensure the natural and cultural resources will be maintained and not forgotten.